Hey everybody, it's Mark Ruggiero here, Clark Commando 1983. I'm up. It's uh, Thursday morning on the 21st of September 2023. So almost 5 in the morning, yeah. So I thought I would do my Learn to Play After Action Report once against Columbia's Games Pacific Victory. It's my deluxe neoprene map that I bought when I did the Kickstarter. I'm solitaire in this just to try to get the rules down. I got a game of this planned against my friend Mike Kelly for uh, Sunday. So, and so what I'm going to do, I already did a part one, which kind of goes over some of the scale and, and different things. Um, I'm going to be doing a, um, I decided I'm going to break this up into phases. So I'm playing the, uh, you know, and I'm not going to play in Sunday, so I won't get through it. I'm hoping to get through at least a turn. Um, but I started with the December 41 Rising Sun, which is what I think we're planning on playing um, on Sunday, which is, uh, yeah, that's my hope. That, that's what we're going to play, because... And I'll just repeat, Pearl Harbor's already attacked. Some of the special rules that are in effect for the first turn, I'll show you the sequence of play. There's no initiative. The Japanese get to go first. And what I've decided to do is I'm going to try to do the two movement phases for this video. And I'll make each phase a video. And that gives me today and tomorrow to get through the turn because uh, Saturday... I'll be working on moving some stuff around with my son in the garage here and trying to get it prepped to be a big monster game area that I'm working on setting up as a distraction from my cancer. So, that being said, um, so yeah, so turn one, I'll show you the sequence of player in a second. There's no initiative phase. Um, Japanese get to go first. There's the air fleet. Pearl Harbor has already happened. There is an optional rule where you can execute Pearl Harbor. But uh, the air fleet, which are the carriers here, and the battleships, I believe, it's in the setup. It says air fleet. Where is it? Um, okay, Mark, here we go. Yeah, so air fleet is the Akagi and the Chicago. The Congo a cru and a Cruiser 3. So that's the four ships here at Trek. They cannot move on turn one because they're busy. They were busy bombing Pearl Harbor. Um, the Philippine Army, uh, the Infantry 1 cannot be withdrawn from the hex. Other units can flee the island. And once the war starts, if they're eliminated, they can be rebuilt in a USA home base. Uh, that's part of the production phase, which I'll cover in that video, production. Also, the Japanese player, except in China, does not have to get double hits in any terrain that requires double hits in combat, which I'll go over that when I do the combat. But basically, double hits takes two hits to eliminate uh, one. Okay, so we're going to just do, I'm going to show you the sequence of play. The rule book for this is pretty simple. It's about a little over eight pages. Like most Columbia games, I like to call it pretty simple, but, you know, usually fairly deep gameplay. That being said, I've read the rules. I've never played this before. So take any moves I make with a word of caution. My goal here is more to show you how to play the game. So normally you would roll initiative at the beginning of a turn when the allied player wins ties. Both players would roll two dice. High roll gets to pick who goes first, who goes second. But like I said, that is skipped on turn one uh, for this particular scenario. Uh, I'm not going to I'll go over the victory conditions maybe in a wrap-up video. There's a way to win automatically um, and... Otherwise, the game goes until June of 45 and quarterly turns. So, that being said, normally the blocks are not all facing towards the player. Only your pieces would be facing you. That's one of the neat things about the system is the uh, hidden aspect. 
All right, so movement. Uh, each hex in the game is 600 miles. Just to give you an idea of the scale, I covered that in the first video. So there are multiple types of movement. Um, there's tactical movement, or I'm sorry, operational movement, uh, which most units can move one or two hexes. You have to use strategic movement to do invasions. Uh, infantry and garrisons, which are, you know, let's see, I want to, uh, excuse me. So this is an infantry unit, which I showed in the first video. Those cannot move over sea unless they're being part of an invasion or they're doing a strategic movement uh, or they, I believe, can do a rebase because you move between bases. But that's um, and governed by strategic movement, which is governed by your headquarters, which for the Allies, just as a reminder, you have Nimitz stationed there in Hawaii. He can control anybody on this side of this orange line here. Uh, in the rule book, it says it's a light blue line. It's not light blue, it's orange. And MacArthur, who starts in the Philippines, can track anybody on this side of the line. Uh, the Imperial Japanese Army Headquarters, and later I'll show you Nimitz, they all look the same. And their pips, they can't attack. Uh, they, I believe they can defend, but they're pretty screwed if they're by themselves. Their pips are used for to strategically move stuff around. So, uh, and you have to expend strategic movements to, um, uh, move like uh, things by sea, like if you want to invade with infantry and stuff. So, that being said, we're going to do the movement phase. Oh, and the Imperial Japanese have a Imperial Japanese Army headquarters and a naval headquarters. And obviously, their army headquarters control their infantry, garrisons, um, army, air. Let's see, it's got a list here. Uh, the command strategic movement. So the Imperial Japanese Army Headquarters control Army uh, armor, ground. Oh my God! Infantry, ar uh, air force units, and garrison units. And the naval, of course, can control all the ships and the marines, I believe. Yes, the naval special forces, actually. All right, so that being said, um, once again, I'll show you the secret uh, initiative. So like I said, that skipped. Now what we're going to do is we're going to proceed to do player one movement, which is me. Um, every unit... Um, do operational and strategic moves. And so we're going to execute that. Let me open up to the one page of rules that cover movement, just in case I need a reference when I do this. Um, so obviously, uh, each turn's three months. So this is the initial stages of the war. Um, I want to make sure that I don't exceed stacking limits, which I've covered in the other video. And I also want to make sure that I don't violate, uh, if you're moving into battle, you have to also observe hex side, what can move in from each hex side in a hex. That being said, let's see here. And then a unit can only participate in operational movement or strategic movement, but not both. Uh, da -da, optional rules. Combat. Sorry, guys. I should have. We're jumping right in. I tend to do that. I get so excited. I just want to jump in and share share my stuff with you guys. 
let's see here. Battle stacking for both players. There's also a reference. Here is the terrain. Dang it. Oh, here we go. Terrain. Uh, stacking of four. Clear two hex side or per hex side. There's also a hex side. How many can enter? In each hex side when you enter battles. Hexide limit, here you go. Hexide limits, it's under stacking limits in the movement right in front of me. So for ground units, it's a limit of, this is if you're moving into battle, it's two units per hexide. And one unit for all other terrain, except for Alpine White, which are impassable. Air and naval units ignore hex side limits. All right, so movement. So here we go. So you want to try to obtain, uh, I think would be the uh, Japanese uh, equivalent of, um, uh, oh, excuse me, um, their initial gains in the beginning of the war I'm not exactly sure how much that would be <laughs> for the first term I'm going to make a couple of assumptions here as they go I'm trying to look up one other thing here 5.8 seaborne invasions just to make sure I get that right which is part of movement um, the, at least the movement to do that piece Okay, that was easy. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to move. So, um, let's see. I have really no idea if any of this is all is optimal or not. Um, there is a possibility that the, you know, things can get opposed and whatnot. So, that being said... First thing I'm going to do is naval units can move two. So what we're going to do is we are going to, and you cannot use garrisons. These garrisons look kind of like infantry. They have GA on them for Japan. For the garrisons, those can only be used for defense. They can't attack. They can move, you know, but they can't be used in attack or anything like that. And they can only move in friendly hexes as opposed to the infantry. So let's see here. What do we want to do first? Let's try to do China. We're going to, there again, no idea. Uh, let's see. So here you got a couple of, let's see if you can see this. I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, you barely can. So I've got uh, pretty powerful Chinese forces here. This is a mountain hexide, so it can only be crossed by one unit, so we won't be attacking there. Uh, do you want to attack Chen King? May not be smart, but I think what we will do 
is in a clear hex, stacking is, okay, keep in mind the uh, number of blocks per hex side, which I went over. Uh, clear, let me look it up again. Such a dummy. One thing maybe this could use, has a train of uh, key. And then the rules are the train effects, which are not that difficult. Let's see, rail lines. Mm. Clear, two per hex side. All right, Mark, come on, get with the program here. Rail lines. Oh, there's the stacking chart on the back of the rule book. That is correct. Um, oh, boy. Oh, so clear. Do the major base. It's control, painting. Oh, my goodness. I have this right in front of me, guys. I'm so sorry about this. Uh, uh, got that. I'm ready to do that. I just need the answer to this one question I got in my mind. You know how it is when you're learning a game, you read the rules, and then you're like, oh. Right? Like, what's going on here? All right, let's see. If the index helps. There we go. 4.2. All right. There we go. Uh, next number of blocks. Blah, blah, blah. Stacking only applies after all movements completed. Second limits are shown on the back cover. Okay. All right. So as an example, let's see if they're in cahoots here. So it's a major base. Back of the rule book says major bases. Remember, major bases have these hexagons. Hopefully you can see that as opposed to these colored dots. Um, let me look at my camera. You zoom in a little bit for you. So for example, major base, minor base. Okay. All right. There we go. Let's, there we go. Let me show you that. So we're gonna look back. It's a major base. We're gonna attack Chung King, or we're gonna move to attack Chung King. So one air and two ground units and four naval so let's see if it looks like go to air and two ground units and hq i don't believe hqs count for stacking uh, yeah i don't believe so <laughs> Yeah, they don't count for stacking. So, all right. So there's a mountain hex side here. Uh, hex side, so I can get two units in there. So like you said, no idea if this is a good idea or not. May not be. So we're going to cross here with, we're going into battle. So we can cross in with one infantry there. One infantry there. All right, um, and then the air, so we'll send in, let's go ahead and we'll send in this air here. And that looks like that's our max attack that we can do within the stacking limits. So that's that movement. Oh, I do have the armor. You know what? I'm going to move in the armor because I have a feeling the armor a little more effective on attack. So that's the one armor unit we have. 
and I'm cheating. What did I do? I went one, two. Oh, that's what I did. I took the air out. I want the air. And we will keep this infantry here. This infantry moved in from here. Oh, I can do two. This is a clear hex side, so I can do that. We'll do that for movement. We don't want the uh, Chinese to get any funky ideas, so we'll move the other infantry up here. Um, okay. And I think to me, uh, that's what we're going to do for now. That's it for now, for that, for the Chinese front. May not be aggressive enough. I could I could attack Lan Sing, but not with what I feel comfortable with right now. So now we're going to go over here, and we're going to command the... Uh, Marines can move like naval units. Uh, so what do we want to do here? I don't think, no. Let me look up one other thing. Now I can fix that off site. Okay. So we want to take wake. Um, we can do that unopposed. Well, right now it's unopposed because the allies haven't done their movement yet. So we're, Marines can move like naval units. So we're going to do that. Uh, and we're going to do that with the air. Those both come in from this hex side. So I'll do this like this. It's a C hex. Um... Ground units. Let me cross the hex side. Okay. So these are considered naval, so they don't count. There's no hex side limit there. We are going to move a sub one, two in here. In a C hex, we can have for stacking, we can have up to, um, I believe, four naval, which the Marine counts. Let's see here. So C, yeah, four naval, no ground, because uh, infantry and marines doing amphibious assaults count as C, and then one air unit. Can fly as cap or attacking. So we're gonna fly in the uh, that naval air unit. So they have a range of one hex, I believe. Yes. That is correct, right? Uh, yeah, they move one hex. So we want to make sure we take wake. And I think the other piece we want to try to do is we want to invade. Can we get to the Philippines? Buh. Let's see, are we set up to attack the Philippines? Uh, excuse me, Lord. Invasions, rule 5.8. So invasion range, two hexes. Ugh. And they are going to cost me strategic movements, which invading wake, which is unoccupied, is uh, one per unit. The Imperial Japanese headquarters can do four strategic moves. So that's one, because an invasion does use up a strategic move. I uh, can't move any of those naval units. I can move. Uh-huh. Uh, Sub. Yeah, it looks like this is what we gotta use. 
Just in case the allies want to get a little frisky, we're going to do that. And then we'll go ahead and put a sub here so we have some capability to stop um, these naval units here from moving in their turn to reinforce um, Wake Island. So, all right, let's see. Where's the Philippines at? Here's the Philippines. So, yeah, that looks like a pretty tough nut to crack on the first move of the game. Looks like I can't get at it. Looks like I might have to set it up, which is kind of sad. It is clear. Uh, let's see, what could I, is there something available I can invade with? Just doesn't look like it. It's just kind of messed up. Okay. I want to get in a position to do something. Small base for Musa, major base. Okay. Well, I think we'll go ahead and do a uh, move in some air. Just do an air attack. These guys here, they can move. It's one hex there, one hex there. Move in some naval ships to attack his sub. That might do something. Let's go ahead and bring in this air to attack. Uh, and you know what? That's overstacked. You can't do that. So, oops. Uh, all right. No, this was in Canton. This was here. So bring in this. And then these three naval units. Oh my goodness. So we can attack uh, with the sub. And this move also pins the uh, sub, I believe. I hope. Yeah, we could attack with that. It's not too promising. Um, you know, may not be smart, but let's you know, it's just not okay, we'll use a strategic move to bring in this guy. What kind of yeah, it's a major base. So that and we'll bring in the Marines. I can do that. It's two ground units, one air, and I got three naval. We will bring in uh, one more naval. That way we can get some shore bombardment when we do invade. Um, I'm sure there's some smarter moves I could be making. Saipan, Palau or major bases. Need to get in a position to attack Malaya. That wouldn't hurt. I'm gonna do so. So far, so we got a pose landing. So we got one. And actually, I can't do this. So two, three. I can do one land unit. That equals one, two, three. And let's see, Rabal's unoccupied. Can I get new ground units to Rabal? The two hexes, yeah. So we'll move this guy here, this infantry unit. 
So it's based on, um, they can do up to four strategic moves. So once you're done your movement, you turn this over to three. So that signifies that, that HQ has done all its strategic movement. I'm sure I should have some other movement, which I'm gonna have to think about when I play against Mike, but um, I think for now, I'm just not sure what to do. So this sets me up right now for I'm attack, gonna be attacking in the Philippines. I'm gonna take, well, hopefully take Wake Island Take Rabal. I'm going to set up to attack. Um, I want to make sure I'm set up so where I can attack Singapore. And so it looks like I'm in a position to do. I think what I'm going to do is I'm also going to move in, uh, looks like, looks like I could do this, move in this area in here, and once again, a major base, move in both of these naval units, and I will pin this guy in Borneo. Because yeah, I'm actually going to need to invade Borneo and, and Singapore next turn. So I think I can set that up. And that looks like the Japanese, I'm going to call that done for their movement. There's probably more movement that they could do that would be much better. can't believe we're 31 minutes in already. All right. So now the, what happens is now you go to the Allied movement. And keeping in mind the same restrictions that we just talked about. Um, I don't think it's going to be a lot because there was a lot of really weak stuff around. And in fact, Nimitz, I have him on his full strength side. He might not be full strength. Let's see, set up. Yeah, Nimitz should be a one and not a... Uh, Four. So they really don't have a lot of strategic movement capability. Um, MacArthur, let's make sure he's correct. Is the HQ? He's in Manila. And he should also be a one and not a three. So, yeah. All right, so we fix that. Uh, pinning, attacking units. Uh, prevent equal number of defending units of any type from moving. This is called pinning. So I was able to pin the sub here with my naval moves. So that sub can't move. Uh, the first turn, you can, uh, the one factor infantry unit represents the Philippine American Army, which can't move out of the Philippines in turn one. You got one air unit attacking here that pins this guy. Uh, excuse me. Um, and the one thing I probably should have done was placed a Japanese unit here. I didn't. So this guy can actually reinforce here. You can go one, two, because naval units can move two. So we'll do that. Might not be a good idea since that's a one pip unit, but we'll do it anyways. And... You know what? I think I just violated the rules. Let me see what it says about the Philippines. Very short rule. Um, sorry this video has taken so long. I didn't expect it to. Uh, da -da 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 Philippine Army. Okay, all right, so <coughs> Philippine says I can't do that. All right, so we'll reinforce there. Everything's pretty weak, so we're going to stay hunkered down where we're at. I think what I want to do 
So I want to be a total wimp and I'll be able to demonstrate a little bit more how combat works. So I'll move this into Wake Island. The submarine. I don't really want to move the uh, the air because units are more expensive to build from scratch than the, I believe than just replacement, so you want to be careful. And for example, this Army Air only has one pip. I could move it in here to oppose the landing on Wake, but I don't really feel like, uh, I don't think that's necessarily a good idea. Everything stateside is super weak. Um, I can do a, what's called a rebase. Now move me up to four. I have nothing that I want to do that with right now. And I don't want to use any strategic movement because that will make my headquarters go out of existence. So that's it for the allied moves. There, there again, no special rules, but just the strengths and where things are for the allies. I think pretty limiting as far as what they can accomplish. Uh, where's Wavel? Wavel controls the allies. Or we could do a change of base. <laughs> I do want to get, let's see, we're going to do a change of base with this air unit to Townville. Move this guy up here to change of base. Get him in the Townville also. <laughs> And there's nothing in range right now where the Japanese can really do a whole lot as far as trying to invade Australia. And I do want to reinforce Port Moresby. We'll do that. And that's what's called a rebase. It's not a strategic movement. I don't know. Yeah, you were able to see that. All right, so that wraps up movement. So my next video, I'll be covering combat. Um... And like I said, there again, a pretty simple set of rules. Um, maybe I want to, do I want to move some guys in India? Let's see. Land units can I put in a minor base? Okay, they're already max stacked. So that's it. That's uh, video two in the bag showing you movement. That's how simple it was. Hopefully it's clear, but it, you know, I know I had to look a couple things up, um, but you kind of do that when you're learning the game and I appreciate your time if you spend it with me here and I hopefully will make the uh, next step will be combat in this sequence of play. Hopefully I'll make that a little more dynamic and a little more exciting. All right, until next video, take care.